episode 13, part two, Moments with Mansui, hosted not by Mansui. <laughs> <laughs> Moments with Tandor. Moments with Tandor. It's Tandor. How are you, friend? <laughs> I'm good. I think this is weird that I'm hosting your podcast. I feel weird. Like, throughout the day, I was like, so what do I do? Do I just get there and wait? Yeah. And wait for the thing to start? Yeah, yeah. it feels very weird. I mean, it's, it's been a journey. Um, yeah. I've seen some of the apps that you, you've done. You've yes. interviewed um, some really great industry yeah. uh, folk, uh, most of which your friends that yeah. you have close relations with. Yeah. What was the journey like having to have conversations that I think friends don't have, you yeah. know, because we meet like in, in, in vibes yeah. and we don't have those difficult conversations. I think more than anything, even with picking the people that I ended up picking, right, the idea was I was already very scared of starting the podcast. Why? So I was going to pick, I don't know, I don't know. Do you know there's a fear that I can't shake? And I'm at a place where I feel like I can shake it now and like I can function and play with it and make it understand that you're not needed right now. Uh, but I was really scared of starting the podcast and I picked the people that I knew that, one, I'd be very comfortable with, but also uh, people that I've always wanted to speak to, that I always wanted to know their stories, people mm. that I didn't know before, mm. like that they're done. Um, but everyone else really was picked uh, 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 very intentionally to, to help me get rid of the fear. Uh, and everyone knew that they were there to to kind of help build this thing. I think a lot of people don't talk about fear and yes. are honest about being fearful yeah. of things. I have witnessed you be afraid yeah. to do things. Yeah. So one, congratulations on doing Thank this. Thank you. But two, where do you think that fear comes from? Yeah. I I've tried to kind of understand it even through therapy, why I get so fearful to do things. I have so many ideas. I think about so many things. I put down so many things on my journal. Um, but I don't know. I, I I don't know if it's uh, Stockholm, not Stockholm, man. What is it? Um, what's that in syndrome? Like, an in, like a... No. Uh, man. Imposter. Imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome. I really think I could have that. Uh, because I'll have... Talk to us because I feel yeah. like a lot of people suffer from it. I, for one, yeah. have imposter syndrome yeah. moments, right? Yeah. And people aren't... I don't know. They they're not vocal. Yes, about it. Yes. What does that physically feel like? It genuinely feels like you will throw up. Like it's like when people call you up. Uh, for example, when I got the call to come back to nine four seven, you start thinking, me, like, you know that you're good at this thing, but there's still something that lingers in the back of your mind that feels like, what if I fail? And then if I think about failing, mm. and I don't want to even do it because mm. if it fails, oh my God, it's going to bomb and it's going to break my heart. It's not even about other people. It's almost as if you're scared of not seeing it through. Um, and a lot of the times, it's something that I've also struggled to articulate to say, I think I have a fear of failing, so I don't start. What do you think the worst thing about failing is? I think for me, so I've had those moments, yeah. right? And how I've reconciled it in my mind and how it's helped yeah. me is what is the worst thing about possibly or potentially failing? Like what's so bad about failing? I don't know. I think maybe I've, I'm hard on myself and I feel like if if it doesn't go through, if it doesn't work out, then I, I, I don't know. I, I would have failed myself. And then? Uh, and I don't know. So, I, I mean, so I'd rather not start if I'm not going to do it really well. And I've always struggled with that. I'm trying this year to, mm. you know, push myself, even with this podcast, to do things that I've always wanted to do uh, beyond the fear. But the fear is still there. The yeah. fear is still there. I, ca I can't articulate it, but it feels like... And you know what the crazy thing about it is? You look at other people do things around you and you know you can do them. Yeah. You know... You're really good at them. Not even about competing or anything. You know that you, you can do it. The better. capacity I have, I could kill this. But you can't pull through for yourself because what if it doesn't work out? So one of my pinned tweets I yeah. think speaks to people and and fear yeah. and, and it's go confidently in the direction of your dreams. Live the life you imagined. Nothing to lose, mm. but life itself. Mm. So my thing is always in moments of of fear. There's nothing to lose except for Oksala is Like was off. Yeah. At the end of yeah. the day. So you failed at this and you yeah. failed at that. So what? But I think this podcast um is definitely a, a direction in the in the right it's well, a step. A move in the right direction. It's yeah. definitely a step in the direction of, of I'm just gonna go for it. I, I don't know. We'll let's see. let's talk about Mansui. Yes. And where it all began. Because I think yeah. for me for the longest of time, it's a little bit murky until yeah. 
until I, I meet you. Yeah. You're not very vocal about your upbringing. Yeah. Um, really? No. <laughs> you're not. Or your parents. Yeah. Talk to me about it. Ooh. Okay. I uh, grew up in Soweto in lady. Love it. Uh, part of my life in Springs as well. Um, and that's because my parents separated, I think, when I was like five, six. Um, and then they both remarried. Uh, but yeah, I grew up in a family, a, a hectic Christian family. Yeah. Uh, my gran, who's the love of my life. Like, yes. like oh, And she's a vibe. And she's a vibe. Yeah. At 93, my gran goes to the mall to have ice cream. Oh, I love it for her. Alone. My my queen. Queen. <laughs> to take herself out <laughs> to go have ice cream. Very independent woman. Um, so raised in a home with lots of cousins, you know, with my mom and her, her siblings. When I was young, I remember my mom and her sisters were still at home mm. um, until everyone obviously moved out and everything. But I, I was raised, I was raised in a very female forward house. I remember at a point, my cousin, Denny Boy, was the only man Denny in boy. the house. Yes, Denny Boy. <laughs> Denny Boy. <laughs> Your face. <laughs> Teddy boy. Boy's got <laughs> stories for giants. <laughs> but Teddy Boy was the only male in yeah. the house at a point. Um, and, and it was just females. My aunts had girl kids. My mom had just me at the time before Tsekho. And my gran, when I was born, my, my grandfather had already left. So I grew up in a very for, a female forward family. Um, and it was always, we, we definitely did not have much. Yeah. <laughs> we definitely didn't. Um, I, I said last week, being, being in a crash, yes. you know, MD, it's not too far from in a lady. So in a lady, it's like, in a lady, in a lady, in a lady. And then there's Tladinum on the other yeah. side. Are, so. are you singing the song or are you telling us a story? Peter my face as a long day. But, but being, being, you know, I had cousins, Ezola, Abum Tladzi, but mm. I went to crash MD. Uh, normal childhood, you know, you play t- too late outside and you're in trouble. Um, from there, I went to school, a primary school, a local primary school. Uh, and then I think it was just much later, I think when my mom and my stepdad, uh, it's even strange saying that because it's always just been my dad, but my mom and my dad, uh, when they uh, got married, I think I might have been like, 10, 11. And then at a point, then I moved to Springs to, yeah. to, to live with my mom and her husband. How did it feel? Because, uh, I mean, it's great. There's ups and downs of, yeah. or the pros and cons of growing up in uh, an all-round female sort yeah. of environment, right? I think a male influence is, is very important. Absolutely. Uh, I think the girl child needs her father. Absolutely. Um, you didn't really have that with no. your biological father. No. I think my memories of my biological dad are when I was literally like around five. Uh, and then I remember visiting him when I was in matric. Uh, he works for a huge company that has matric support for the employee's children mm. when they're in matric. So they had that program and he asked my mom if I can be a part of it when I was in matric. So I, I did that. But my dad was solidly in my life a lot when I was young. I don't have memories of my dad being around like maybe after 10. Yeah. Um, no. I remember though, like before then, like I knew 6th May, my birthday, my dad's going to come. Mm. But I also, there was never like anything that was said to me about him that was negative. He just wasn't there. Uh, and I think in my head, only now in therapy, I'm understanding that the issue that I've always had, and I had a conversation with my dad now because we speak, was... When, when parents remarry, and my, I was the only child between my mom and my dad, mm. when you remarry and start other families, there's, there's this person that must find their place mm. in both your families. Mm. Um, and I was trying to make him understand maybe my standoffishness or whatever issues I might have that are coming up in therapy is that when you're an only child, and then your dad marries someone and then your mom marries someone, you're kind of like an island. Did you feel alone? No, only now as I grow and I go through therapy about it. At the time, all my cousins, you know, I never felt alone. And I think it's because a lot of my cousins didn't have dads. Okay. So it, it was normal. It was normal for me. Yes. It, ne- it never bothered me. I promise you. It only bothered me well as I was a working person. Why do you think that is? Why do you think as you, as you grew older, is it because now you are more knowledgeable and you, you saw that actually that's not normal or do, is there moments and milestones yeah. where you felt like your father should be here for this? Um, Not really. Like I said, it's so weird how your your childhood really forms your your 
reality and your your perception, right? Uh, growing up without a present dad, and shout out to my stepdad, he really was in my life, and I mm. grew up literally in his home. Mm. Um, and my dad, all he could do at the time. Uh, but when I look at my life and I think about how I didn't at the time, and I was speaking to my therapist about this, why wasn't I bothered as a child about where my father is? Yeah, And it's because genuinely... Even though it was a family that didn't have much, my family was full of love. My mm. grandmother was amazing. Everyone in my hood to this day, like my grand is that person. There was never a lack that I felt with my dad not being there. It only hit me genuinely. I think the one time when I was like, I need my dad was after my mom passed on. I was about to ask that. There, there's something about losing one parent yeah. that, that draws you closer to the, the existing, yeah. you know, parents. Yeah. Um, what was that feeling like, right? Mm. Was it weird for you to now have to reach out to this man? Not that you didn't yeah, care, yeah. but you didn't have a void to fill. Mm. But now this person who has been predominantly there mm. all your life mm. is now no longer there. Mm. There's only one other person mm. that is alive and breathing. That is part of making me. Correct. Yeah. Uh, I think it was very awkward because I felt like, I know that my dad's always, want, I've got siblings. Mm. Uh, Neo and Timisang, who are my dad's children that I've always had a great relationship with and that was never hindered, right? So I've always known, even through them, that dad really would like to have a relationship with you. We just never knew how to start that yes. relationship. Uh, and I remember when my, ma my mom passed on, it must have been like two years later, and he was just like, yo, let's have coffee and chat. And I was like, I need it. Mm. Um, but I remember even going to meet him for coffee, I remember thinking, you're literally my only remaining parent and all the anger that I think I have towards you doesn't matter anymore. No. Because in fact, if I lose you, I literally will die. And I don't have anything to hold on to because I didn't I wasn't raised by this person. Mm. But it's just knowing that, oh my word, one part of who I am is gone and I've got this one. And how much anger can I hold on to? Mm. Uh and is it worth it? Sing Kulile, I need nothing, I'm independent. But I just need this person as a father to be there. But it was a very awkward interaction. I think it's something about death that, um, one, yeah. makes you aware of your own mortality. Yeah. Um, secondly, awakens your eyes to everyone else's yeah. mortality, especially yeah. <laughs> those close to you. Um, the, 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 the passing of a parent mm. and a sibling, I mm. think, is like... Recipe for disaster. Yeah, it realigns your life. <laughs> like, you know, but I, I always choose to look at the glass half full mm. instead of half empty. Mm. How have you dealt with the passing of your mom? Or have you? Uh, it, it's something that I'm still dealing with. Uh, I think this is this year is probably the first time I can speak about my mom without tearing up. And like just not tearing up because I don't miss her, but without debilitating pain. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's hard. I deal with it every time. I, I, it's made me ultra sensitive uh, to everything. And I have to remind myself, not everyone's out to hurt you because you, you already live in default hurt. You already, you, my, my, my normal life is mourning. Mm. My normal life is grief. Um, and you kind of become so sensitive that you have to kind of take everything else and remember that not everyone's trying to hurt you. You're just hurt. Mm. You are functioning from a hurt place. So it's it's a very hard thing to to deal with. I think losing a parent is the wildest thing. It You don't get it until it happens. Mm. You don't understand it. Mm. You cannot even try carry that mm. with someone. All you can do is try to be there. Mm. Um, but you cannot understand it. It's, it's, it's weird. But the one thing that's taught me about my mom's passing or my mom's passing has taught me is that we... we, we really live to die. Yeah. And you said this after my mom's passing. I remember you came that night when I called and you said, by virtue of living, we're just going to die. No, it's the one thing we know for sure. But I think our brains don't... We forget. It's, it's, it. it's weird, yeah. right? And and you're reminded when a death happens. Yeah. And then you, you go through the, the grieving and, and mourning process. Yeah. And then again, you sort of... Yes. It's like the Matrix. Yes. <laughs> like, you know? And then you forget. Yes. But I think God designed us in that way because if we were to live in that grief, then we wouldn't be living. Absolutely. But it, it's wild because you do feel like you live in it. Dude, there were days where I'd wake up and I'd feel like, sleep some more. Like there were days where I felt like I literally cannot do a radio show today. Mm. I cannot open my eyes today. Mm. I, I can tell you, it's been six years since my mom passed. 
I feel like Jeez, it was a, six years it already. Was six years, and it feels like it was just a blank of an eye because I feel like I was in a blanket of heavy grief for so long that I could not see. I could not see with my career. I didn't care what was happening with everything around me. Um, I I opened my eyes and I was like, I've gained so much weight. Mm. <laughs> you know, um, you're not aware of just what happens, and it was six years of pure pain sure. like 100 percent every single day and you living alone and you you can't drag yourself out to go hang out at jimeli with friends and you know that you need that to catch a breather and get out of the grief it's it's a mental uh, rat for the lack of a better word yeah. right and uh, you're not the only one to yeah. go through it there's lots of people yeah. how did you get out of that i remember the one night um I still stayed in Daneford. And that was, imagine when I started that prayer, it was a long time ago. I don't even stay there anymore. But I remember the one night, it was so painful. It was so, so painful. I remember just thinking, I just want to live. It's fine. But like, kind of bargaining with God that if you, if you just make this pain just a little less, I'm going to show up for myself. I just wanted to be like, just just a little less pain so I can wake up. Mm. Just my, my desperation at the time to be alive. Because I felt like my grief was killing me. Yeah. And my desperation to be alive is what kept me alive. I, I literally, my only prayer every single day was, I just want to stay alive. I just want to stay alive. I, I look at my grand. My mom's passing was so heavy on my whole family. And my grand, who's 93, has lost a fifth child. And this was the first time my grand at 93 going to therapy. And she was just like, wow. I can't do it. I can't deal with it. My aunt saying, I can't deal with it. And now you feel like you're carrying these people and you're carrying yourself. And my little brother is only finishing school. And all of a sudden it feels like, on top of my grief, I'm really carrying everyone's grief. But it's just so heavy that you feel like, mm. I'm not going to make it. There were nights where I felt like I'm not waking up. I remember the one night I sent uh, one of our friends, I think I sent Zoe or to me, a message. And I was like, I'm going to leave my key at this place. I don't know if I'm going to wake up. My heart Why was, would you not wake my up? My heart was aching physically. I had never felt... I could feel that this is my heart and it's painful. And I I feel sick. I feel tired. Um, and I was never suicidal. But I felt like if it ends. If it ends naturally? If it ends naturally. If this is how, you know, people die from heartbreak. And yeah. I, I felt like I'm going to die from my mom being dead. <laughs> yeah. I, it's literally going to kill me. So I, pr I prayed to live. Mm. And I was like, if God, if you wake me up tomorrow. I'll take it from there. Sure. Take the pain just a tad lower. I'll take it from there. There's a lot that happens after a head of a, a home yeah. passes. Ooh. Right? When you are suddenly... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, all of a sudden, it's yeah. like, man, sweep. Yeah. I, I think I remember a, a time, I think it was it was after my brother's death. Yeah. And I was, we were in my garage. Yeah. I was 25, yeah. and we had to cook for, for the week, yeah. remember? And Miss Pega every day. Every day. And Zoe looked at me, and she was like, is this us now? Yeah. Because it's like, Tando, eh, Itamati, Izanini. Yeah. I'm just like, and you're thinking, oh, I tell since when? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh, you know, I'm used to Tando, how about taking Itamati? Yes. Now it's like, Tando, so you're taking Itamati. Yeah. What was that shift like for you? Yo, that shift was... My mom, growing up, I saw my mom be like everything to everyone. And I think also when, when someone like that passes, everyone gets lost as well. Mm. And the next best person would be the child of the person. Or, you know, or you, the sister of yeah. school. It's like you're the next per best person to do the thing. That was very hard because I remember thinking, oh my God. Firstly, shout out to my mom. I can't believe she was doing all of this. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, girl. Um, but I had to... Also be like some something has something has to be done. Someone has to assume that role. Uh, you're in a family where everyone is falling apart from this grief, 
And if we all fall apart and die, then there's no family anymore. Correct. So so someone has to, and I'm very strict. So even when my, my aunt on the phone, I'll put outside my tears and I'll be like, no, this has to be done. This, you know. Um, so uh, assuming that role was hard because I was always a child. My mom, at 29, when she passed on, she was still sending me money when she gets paid and I was working. Mm. <laughs> she was still, being as with me 15 talk to us about your mom yeah. and, and and who she was because oh. i think we live to uh, you can, i mean just the people she's left behind yeah. and 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 how she made them feel yeah who was your mom oh my gosh oh my gosh to this day when i walk around in soweto like in a lady a piri whatever look Firstly, I look exactly like her now. Yeah. It's so weird. Like, as soon as she passed on, I was like, oh my God, I look like her. Yeah. Um, my mom was the single most charismatic human. She was very funny, extremely well, funny. Well, the apple didn't fall far from the white wax. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she was very funny. She was the life of the party. Every time I get figure. And my mom, I'm going to But when I see. Meanwhile, we are. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> So one thing I didn't take from her. <laughs> Listen, my last Christmas, my mom gave me a bottle of red wine. Oh, so nice. shout out to okay. her. Her last Christmas, okay. rather. She was just like, hey, good good doing with yeah. everything that you're doing. Shout out. Yeah. And she gave me a bottle of red wine. Anyway. Uh, but my mom was the life of the party. Everything that you see me as, multiply that by about five, maybe. Wow. That's what my mom was. My mom was loud. Before you even hear the car, my Cesar. Mm-hmm. You hear her. She was, but my mom was also very artistic. My mom studied Italian dressmaking. She was, she knew wow. how to make impasa. She took out her friends. I don't know if you remember at the funeral, her one friend, Bela Kulumati. At my wedding, my friend made my wedding dress mm. with a week to go. She was like, because we didn't have money. And I was like, Flip, how am I going to do this? And she was like, I studied this thing. Mm. My mom knew how to make clothes. She had multiple industrial machines. So she was really good at it. That's what she studied. She has a diploma in it. Uh, but my mom also, a hustler. My mom was a backing vocalist for mm. some gospel artists, men, Kula. Um, but also, she'd be working Emma Festival. If I have roses, like, I'm full. I'm full of hack. Maybe five and he has given me the leaf. Maybe five roses. Okay. Give me your only five roses. Uh, I five roses. Maybe we. It's a park, man. He has been full of park, man. That that dome. At my full of park, friend. By oh, by the big park where there's the um, drinkies. Yes. Okay. But there was the dome okay. where they used to do Ama Festival. Okay. At my full of park. Nase police station. Not too far from there, no. Uh, okay. So at my full of park, uh, my mom. So we got Kichima as well. Oh, my mom was a lot of things. Yeah. My mom used to run. She was really good at it. Uh, there's multiple trophies at home. She was a sprinter. And Begakichi, my opposite is full of Gune Stadium, is busy shep. Begakichi, my corner. But my mom was part of I'm a festival. So she'd be backing that artist or working as part of the security or project manager, mm-hmm. whatever. Um, she was a backing vocalist for gospel music artists. Um, she she worked at a, dis- as a, a at a dispensary for a doctor. Uh, how did you find <laughs> all of this time? We are Tunga, we are Kijima. You were but, it, but it was also all phases of her life. Okay. So she was very, she'd switch up. Yeah, and I like, love that. I'm sad Tungi singing. But can you see what, I, I think your mom then is the epitome of that. Exactly. You know, right? Because she's like, I'll try this. Yeah. Right? Like right? If, I, if I suck at it, so what? I'll, and then I'll I try like that. that. That's living. And I think I what like your mom that. did was live. And I think a lot of the time wow. when we mourn people, we don't see that God was like, it's so crazy because now I'm, as I'm talking about it, I'm realizing all the things yes. that my mom did because my mom was always just mom and because she was in the army. Mm. Um, yeah, so later in life she was in the army. My mom was very much involved in the struggle. Uh, too many stories uh, of the things that she's achieved. But even when you go, she started the netball team at the military hospital. Wow. Um, she was a, a short lady, but she was very, very sporty. Everything. Loved Orlando Pirates with all of her life. Yes. Yeah. Let's talk about, I mean, your mom dabbled in many different things, but mm. I think the one thing that you you sort of, I don't know, I, I'm assuming, yeah. took from her was obviously the arts. Yeah. Um, where did that begin from you? So we reverse. Mm. Okay, Sharp. Let's talk about, let's talk about Girls High. Let's go to the arts first. Okay. Where it started. I was nine years old when my mom and my cousin Utapi took me to Shalro to fame. Isha wrote to <laughs> You're giving away your age. 
Shell wrote to fame. They serve his Did Sharon D host? I don't even know who hosted it. Wasn't it Sharon D? Yeah, you guys are too young. I know. They were like, mm. <laughs> They're like, who's Sharon D? <laughs> uh, Sharon D was the tando of the time. <laughs> Sharon D. Um, Sharon D. Fame. Rebecca Malupa was one of the judges, I think. Uh, I was nine years old. It was at Vista. It's now Soweto Campus, UJ. Vista, yes. Yes. Um, I was at, at, at Sharon to Fame, and I think I got into like the top 20 or top 16. You were like singing. That. I was singing. And because I was shy, uh, my friends had to sing with me. I wasn't shy, shy, but I'd close my eyes when I'm singing. Okay. So my friends had to come and sing with me. Okay. And like back me. Okay. <laughs> All right, Beyonce. <laughs> and they were singing with me. I remember what I was wearing, but I remember even like how my mom believed that you're an entertainer. You're going to sing. Uh, so my mom wanted me to be an, an athlete. I was a very good sprinter. Um, but yeah, I, I went into that. And from there, she was just like, TV maybe? Would you like to do that one yeah. day? And I was like, yes. So every time she'd say, if you want to be on television, you have to focus at school. They're oh, all, they all pass. Okay. I so then you focus on the TV. School, then obviously. I'm like, okay. Okay. Um, but on the other end, my, both my dads are intellectuals. Uh, both engineers. So there was also pressure from my stepdad saying, I was top student in math Olympiad mm. in South Africa. Mm. You know, um, but my mom honed my artistry. My mom was all about that. When I, I drew, I remember in grade two, I drew and my mom was called to a school in Eikemeleng. And they were like, she's really good at this. I, to this day, I can never back that I can draw because I've never tried it again. But I remember my mom saying, you're really good at this drawing mm. thing. And maybe that's where the painting then comes in mm. now. So so artistry, my mom was, she was just like, do well at school, but follow this thing because I know you have it. And it's probably because she knows that then I'm living her dreams that she yes. couldn't follow through with. Yes, you are a slender, never get tired. Uh, yeah. Unless the owner is careless. <laughs> <laughs> and the owner got careless. <laughs> You're so stupid. You're so dumb. Hey. Um, but I remember, Manchu was like the thinnest girl I've ever met. Like, ever. Ever met. Thinnest, yeah. thinnest girl <laughs> I've ever met. And I mentioned that because you say you used to sprint. So I'm yeah. sure. But we're going to have to and Bobalega a a a girls high. No, even from a, a school in Minkul, so it okay. Bing Balega. When I got to girls high, actually. Uh, I didn't really do much sprinting because the change of environment. Okay. Now I'm coming from Soweto, what you were talking about, yes. feeling like, oh, what do I need to do now? Do I need to focus more? Um, you've always gone to schools, Elokshin, and you just feel like, maybe I need to apply myself more than the other kids here. Lababay uh, Chwaele, the space that they're in. So, Ming uh, Fiyakona, I did run a bit. I ran, actually, oh my gosh, I did. I represented the East Strand at the regionals. Um, yeah. I did really well. I got colors for it. And wow. then I stopped. Yeah. I stopped, I think I stopped running in grade 10. Um, and then that was it. Mansui at school. Mansui in high school. Yeah. Um, I mean, I remember you, you you tell stories about how you wanted, you used to come to our bashes there at Mondo High. Yeah. <laughs> 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 There's nothing I wanted but, more than Mondo. But what were you like at Girls High? Because you I know you wanted very to be the different. ratchet girl at Mondio. But Can I tell you, everyone that's watching this uh, at Girls High or any point of my schooling younger when I was in Soweto, I was very different at school. Um, particularly at Girls High. Maybe at Ikemeleng in primary school and like, you know, when I was in Soweto at the time, I was young and I was very confident. Yes. Uh, at Girls High, I did not do anything artistic. I was not forward. My friends were, you know, was my mate. Yes. Um, Cindy Siwe, oh, Shabangu was my friend as well. Uh, but I was not like, there was no socials at Girls High. Mm. So there was never a time where we could go to parties. So the only time we'd go out is to go to Abu Mundio. Yes. Or the schools that are. <laughs> <Abu Mundi. laughs> the schools that schools are doing that, are. that. Yeah. So on Fridays, I'd ask Elsie to meet me outside the school with my change of clothes and she'd take my school bag yes. and I'd get on a taxi, go all the way to Soweto. And it annoyed my mom. But you loved it there. I was like, but it's also where, where, it's, it's, it's where you, you come from. Yes. I find that a lot about people who are, are from Soweto. Yeah. Like, you can take me out of the ghetto, but can't you can't take, take the ghetto out no. of what? No. You know? Everyone else would be like, oh, so buy a tema, buy a plumber. But I'm like, I so bonga blow me tema. I have never, I, when I lived Remember in Remember they used to have, um, <laughs> what was it in, in, in the East Rand? It's like, um, it was like by a river or like a, 
Fountains. E. Jamistin. Fountains. Was it fountains? Yeah, yeah fountains. Sorry, yeah. Jamistin. But have you been e. to Jamistin fountains? Lake. E. Jamistin Lake. <laughs> but there was also a fountains lake. Yeah. Who do you think so, dragged me to fountains? Who? Sabelo. <laughs> because all the people in Mondio used to go to fountains I lake. I partied with all Mondio. My first boyfriend was at Mondio. Of course. Uh, Who's your boyfriend? Uh, uh, oh, <laughs> where did I know? <laughs> where is he now? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where he is. Loyal. Oh, he's full of stories. Stella <laughs> Bella. <laughs> Tell us. You so naughty. Look, no, guys. My first boyfriend was such a liar, right? What did he do? He was so naughty. Uh, which is not far from Inale. Mm-hmm. And then the one time he was like, no, oh, the man's so plumagi, it is pussy cool, yeah. Yeah. So, cool. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, sure, and it's a holiday. So he comes to fetch me by my grands. Mm. My cousins know they're like, oh, we'll land it. Well, she got a big driver, uh, Imotagubo. Imotagubo yeah. in white. Yeah. <laughs> That's was 16. It used to have um, a personalized <laughs> number plate. <laughs> no, I got a sabel. Oh, <laughs> well, that's okay. <laughs> okay, um, continue. So he fetches me. We go to his grand's house. When we get there, he says, I'm an Koko Magabon. Like she's blind. Oh, okay. So he's like, just get up. Yeah, we room le lom nyang ovuli or whatever. Just blow my lap on landi cool. I'm like, shut me. But things are cool drink. Ngile lo koko le. Ah, ngisale mina. Melikoli. Oko oko upi that time. Ah, visa charity. Nungbo ni le mangena. I didn't agang please. Bonanga. Also, because I'm thinking. Oshu anya. Agang bonanga. Yes. <laughs> also, we young, right? So I'm thinking. Oh, she gonna see me. <laughs> Nsale rumini. I shop. As in a koli splome, right? Ankape ngwele kaya. Nothing happens. We were children. Yes. Rona, we were chilling at our yes. age. Yes. At those we days. weren't doing snacks. We literally things. were just chilling and like yeah. loving each other. We were doing this. Yeah. We were going. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Second day, Anglande, same thing. Third day, it's holidays also. Nsena lady, use a Yes. Third day, ah, ngredi sing as we tumuntam zonglande ang fagkrop topiami. Mangi na napa ukokat. Enka kwe na la everyday gua mi azenzel. Something it can be me, ma'am. <laughs> like how do you know it's me? So I'm like, what? She says ngik pegi everyday. Up and down, up and down la gua. So I look at her. And I look at him and I'm like, what the hell? She says, I out, I coupe. Every day, and the like, next thing is, we are need to be pregnant. <laughs> was she not blind? She wasn't blind the whole time. So every time I'd walk past that woman in her yard. <laughs> Why would he say she's blind? They got corner. She was probably thinking, is this girl not greeting me? Yes. Oh, who did see young? And he probably thought, because you know when we're young, you're yeah. like, oh, your that, grand is I mean, there. nobody ever said that their parents were blind. Wherever you are, bruv, you know yourself. Your That's grand is so not blind. Naughty. I hope she's still alive. How's love now? Oh, so lit. <laughs> or not lit. Or not lit. <laughs> <laughs> there is no fire. There is no flame. There's literally no fire. It's so crazy, hey? Uh, I was saying to I was saying someone, I think someone here at work, actually, that I think I'm not even ready to date anymore. I'm just like, I function as a single person. Mm. I function as a single person. I'm, I'm the single friend. You know this. Why? Are you? Is it fear again? Because that's what it smells like. <laughs> no. I don't think it's fear. I definitely don't want to be heartbroken. Yes, then that's called uh, yeah. <laughs> I heard so it. Fear of it with you. Um I definitely don't want to be heartbroken and yeah, maybe it is fear because at the sight of like me na phone the whole day have a mangy phone. But what's the worst thing about that's heartbreak? Joke, eh? Do you know what I mean? Like yes, I'm like phone. Have you guys seen have you seen yourself when you're heartbroken? Of course, a thousand times. I'm phone. What I see in you when you're heartbroken. <laughs> But you heal and you know you you move on and you find something. I know, I know. I I, I really. Uh, do you know why I want to give it a red hot shot now? Is because I I can't believe it. I'm starting to feel lonely. Yeah, I'm and life is to not feel meant like, to be that way. And everything else is coming together. You know, mm. it's just like. And no, yeah, exactly. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, sometimes no peg. I as a woman to as a man, say like of her head. See, now we're still sitting there on Google. You know what I mean? Yeah. Meanwhile, who are you doing it for? For me. it's. I'm hoping that love is on the horizon. I I want it now. What do you want in a man? Because he might be watching. Ooh, I, <laughs> and I blind. And I blind. And I blind. And I blind. Like, <laughs> blind. <laughs> like, I'm blind. <laughs> No, if she's not, if she's blind, if she's visually impaired, if she's visually impaired, said my grand, my grand, my paternal grand was visually yes. impaired, so that's fine. Um, but I really want someone that's honest, someone yeah. that that 
uh, wants love, that's ready to love, uh, that's that's ready to just find something that w- is meaningful. Ang mm. is uh, get up Friday after we go somewhere. I genuinely want a real thing now, and if it's not that, please don't come for me. Um, I know we probably have to wrap it up now, right? Um, I want to quickly talk about your 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 radio journey, yes. right? Because that's your, that's your baby, that's yes. your 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 everything, and yours has been a very interesting one to watch, yeah. right? So UJFM. Wait, firstly, how did you? Because I don't know, how did you end up on UJFM? Why were you doing that? Uh, <laughs> I was submitting because <laughs> uh, I did my degree was psychology, and I had English as one of my subjects. Yeah, um, and I was submitting an English assignment, and I saw. Because I was already a year into UJ. Uh-huh. And we started at the same time, UJ yes. Fair. So um, I was submitting an English assignment and I saw that there's a th- there was an announcement that UJFM is looking for news readers. Didn't we go together to the audition? Yes, we did. Yes. No, we met in the queue. No, no, no. We no went that was together. another one. We went together. We went together. We went to together. Um, and then we became news readers. Yes. Uh, yeah. Mm. They saw us and said, news. <laughs> <laughs> Someone was trying to. <laughs> not that news readers are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are you saying? Someone was just like, you know, not personalities. Because we auditioned to be personalities yeah. and they were like news. Um, that journey, my radio journey has been. I can't believe it took 15 years for me to get to where I think it should have been a long time ago. Mm-hmm. But everything works out as it should. Why do you think it took as long as you think it took? Fear. Yeah, I I was always okay with being in teams and and can we um yeah can we talk about it yeah why is that so I remember having a conversation with you I think you were still with Tap at yeah. Y at the time and I said dude fuck around excuse mm. my language mm. and Tap decides I'm out mm. what happens mm. right there's there's an independence you need mm. um in in this medium mm. that that we do when did that sort of click for you. So after years, I mean, I had worked with TAP even at UJFM. We did YFM. I came to 947. In fact, when I came to 947, I was like, let's do the independence thing the first time. It was beginning yeah. of 2016. And Ravi was like, cool, we can do the shows. And then he was like, okay, let's try you and Zweli together. We did that and I was like, oh my gosh, this works. And it did. And it did. And we did that, Zweli and I. And But I, I had always had a yearning to, what does this look like when I'm alone? Mm-hmm. Because... Because I'd always feel like I, I have a voice that hasn't come out there that 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 starts the link. Correct. That that sets the tone. There's also I I, I feel a comfortability you have in in company. Yeah. That that but it's it's also because that's just what yeah. you've done for yeah. so, for so very long. How are you enjoying now? Oh my Finding God. your your voice, dude. When the switch happened, I think it was after I left the first time. Uh, 2021 when I left 947 and I remember thinking never again is my career going to be tied to someone else Honey. never again mm. that was such a scary time because I felt like how am I here mm. how do I find myself in this position right and uh, what was the question I even forgot <laughs> but I'm how glad does it feel I, finding how does it feel your now voice? oh yeah. my god you must listen to my show I, I do it is it feels like I can't believe this is what I've I've slept on. No one else has slept mm-hmm. on my team. No, no. No one did me dirty. I did myself dirty for so long. I didn't believe in myself. Even though it looks like you believe in yourself. And you know how hard it is to say that when when you you've always functioned as a confident child. I was on mm. show, show road to fame. Mm. I was on every stage growing up. And to grow up and feel like as an adult I'm shyer. About I think it abilities. happens. I think it happens, right? Mm. I, I think when you're a child, you have no inhibitions. Yes. Like there's there's nothing to fear. Yes. And as you grow older and you make mistakes mm. or, or you fail, mm. there's all these insecurities that build up mm. and start to manifest as what in English they call imposter syndrome. Exactly. So all those insecurities had really come up. It's so weird. When, when 947 called me to come back, I felt like, You've said you'll back yourself when the opportunity comes. Here it is. This is it, sweetie. Mm. This is it. You're going back to 947 in a very different light. You're going to do a weekend break for sure. You're going to be alone. Yes. And and I was like, I'm going to make this work, dude. I got two producers. I've got an t- audio guy. I was like, I'm going to make it work. I'm going to do a radio show that I want to listen to. But I'm going to do a radio show that I've always felt like I want to do. And I haven't been able to. Not because of anyone. Because of myself. There's stories. I mean, life for me is like a book, right? Yeah. So it's, it's chapters. And I think in the sit down, we, we've sort of unraveled. Yeah. Like the, I think we're only just touching at the surface. Yeah. But we've unraveled different 
chapters yeah. of your life. And I think we're so hard on ourselves as individuals yeah. in different chapters that we are in. You've overcome a lot to get to where you are yeah. today. What are you most proud of? I'm still standing. I'm still standing. I... My 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 yearning and my my desire to live is wild, but my desire to live beyond what even looks like is on the horizon is wild. I want to see myself achieve all the things I want to achieve. I want to mm. see myself make help my siblings achieve the things that they mm. want to achieve. Um, I'm at a phase in my life T where I'm I'm just. Doing it. I'm coming for it. I'm coming for Your it. Game as yeah. it. And if it fails, it fails. I, love Life, that. I would have I would have given it a red hot shot. There's a bunch of people who, who tuned into moments with Mansui. Yeah. Um that said we love that you gave it a red hot shot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what would you like to say to them? Thank you. Thank you. This is scary, you know. Radio is not as hectic as internet, guys. Yeah. I just do a radio show for three hours and I walk away. Like, this is, I'm scared of checking the comments. You're just like, what are people thinking? But thank you so much. Uh, thank you to the people that were saying, hey, get someone to interview you on the mm -hmm. show because we don't really know you as well. Um, so thank you so much. It's been amazing doing this podcast. I can't wait for season two. The plans are already in motion. Uh, but I can't wait for a lot of things that my production company is going to be doing. Yay! Yes. I, I, I've, I've got people yeah. that, that I have to answer to. So, yeah. so I'm so proud of myself. And thank you. You you make this podcast. It's 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 beyond my wildest dreams what it's done so I'm far. super proud of you. I'm super proud um, to watch you do the things you set out to do. <sighs> I'm I'm proud to, to hear you say things mm. and then put them in motion. Mm. Um, I think you've been through a lot. I think mm. you've done a lot of internal healing and mm. internal learning mm. and there is a newfound radiance oh. that you even that you walk around with mm -hmm. and i'm proud to have you as my friend and i thank oh. you for for sharing yourself with us and, and for sharing other people's stories because i think in what we do we're storytellers that's true and you tell them damn well that's true I'm thank proud you of so you, much friend. oh okay. i love you, love you. Mm -hmm. moments with master <laughs> yeah season one done <laughs> <laughs> yay you guys